the House will have under consideration House Bill number 824. The lady from District 30. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with further reading of House Bill 824. Objection. The lady has the floor to open the debate. Mr. Speaker, may I ask permission to refer to pending legislation just in case? You've heard the request. Is there an objection? Hearing none, the lady has the floor to debate and refer to other legislation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, for the third time, this is the budget for the Commission for Libraries. Um, sorry, I got so many budgets over here, I'm trying to find the right SOP. Okay. If you start with the SOP, uh, you will see uh, line item one is missing. That was previously in uh, the first version of this budget, which now I don't even remember the number. Um, but that was a collection of digital ebooks and audiobooks. Uh, after this budget had run out of JFAC and been, come to the floor, it was brought to my attention some materials that were in that collection that were inappropriate and currently available to five-year-olds um, because some of these books had been previously available in public school libraries. I am happy to report to you that after meeting with the director uh, of the Commission for Libraries, uh, and uh, I did not ask her to remove the book. I said, I want to see your policy, which uh, is being handed out to you now, that allowed a book like this to make it through your system to be accessed by young children. And as we walked through that policy, she acknowledged this policy does not recognize Idaho's obscenity laws, which are also being handed out to you right now. There's a lot more than one. You can take a look at those and, um, and see that we have plenty of laws on the books that define obscene materials and prohibit their distribution to minors. And uh, I know that we've, we've had a bill come through this body that a lot of us are frustrated has not moved across the rotunda. But I do want to point out that in that language, um, I'm sorry, I didn't have time to get these numbered. Um, Idaho Code Section 18, 15, 17, those who uh, are given exemptions are schools, colleges, universities, museums, and public libraries. The Commission for Libraries is not a library. They don't have collections of hardbacks or paperbacks that you can go in and check out there. This ebook collection that this body authorized last year in good faith to assist with pandemic, uh, the closure of libraries during the COVID era, uh, uh, provided an, a number of electronic and audio books out to public schools and public libraries. You could have accessed them on your OverDrive app. Uh, Children could have accessed them in public schools. After going through the uh, collection policy with uh, the director of the Commission for Libraries, she acknowledged the shortcomings in the policy and the absence of a, a lever there for obscene materials that should have been in the policy. Again, this was their first ever collection of books so this was a new space for them. And she volunteered. I did not ask. She volunteered to rewrite the policy when she saw the gaps. I did not ask her to remove any books, but I provided her lists, as you provided them to me, of books. I shared them with her. And she initiated an internal audit. Again, I did not ask. She voluntarily did this because she recognized the gap. So what you will see in the intent language of this bill is 
Section 4 on obscene materials are references to some of the codes I have handed out defining obscene materials. And they are going to incorporate those references into their collection policy. And they will provide a report back to the Joint Finance and Appropriation Committee no later than September 1st, detailing their progress and providing the results of their internal audit. Based on what you have provided to me and I have provided to her, she has already moved at least two books from the collection. Other parts of the uh, budget, I want to, uh, want to note the disclaimer at the bottom of the SOP, which says these are intended uh, as an expression of intent, uh, but they, they are not the law. Line item six contains an error that just, it was correct in the budget that came this morning and it got missed in this SOP on 824. Number six that says telehealth grants. When digging into that further, it was determined that we were getting the cart ahead of the horse and that the technology uh, including high content filtering. So if you look at section five of the bill, which is correctly labeled technology projects, uh, we are requiring that they use these funds, which are ARPA capital projects funds that can only be used for certain purposes here in the libraries, or that they will be granted out to libraries, make no mistake about that. Um, but you will notice we put some strong language in there about complying with existing Idaho code and the Federal Children's Internet Protection Act, including high quality content filtering. So at this point, what I would like to convey to you, and I'm happy to answer any other questions about any other details in this budget. What I would like to convey to you is, this is the budget for the Commission on Libraries local libraries and school libraries are governed by their boards and these statutes. And the Appropriation Committee is not a policy committee. We have made very strong statements in here about what we expect and that's compliance with existing law. And if you take a look at those and you see some gaps in it as the director of the Commission on did, I invite you to work on those because I agree. The materials that were brought to me should never have been made available to young children. And those funds for that collection have been removed from this budget as we all will work together moving forward in the next year to make sure we don't have oversights like that happen again. Uh, with that, again, Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to answer, answer any other questions about any other details in this budget. But that is the long story of why we're on the third budget for the Commission for Libraries. I would ask for your green light. Thank you. Is there further debate? Hearing none? Oh, lady from 31. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you for the opportunity to explain my no on this budget. Um, expressing also my thanks to the good lady from District 30 for the work that she has done but I think um, there's a bigger picture here that I'm keeping in mind. You have on your desk, oh, and Mr. Speaker, for permission, if I may, to reference other pending legislation. Without objection, anyone in debate can reference other legislation here, so let's just, let's just get that established. Thank but, you, Mr. Speaker. Lady has the floor. You have on your desk an email distributed by the Idaho Libraries Association on March 2nd, which was the day before the House State Affairs Committee heard House Bill 666. You will see as you review that email that there are a number of false and misleading claims about the content and potential effects of House Bill 666, including the claim that there is no definition for harmful to children and the claim that people just trying to help kids be good readers would have to live in fear of jail time. 
If the Idaho Library Association, by some chance, did not understand that these were false statements when they distributed this email to their members on March 2nd, they surely had every opportunity to understand that these were false and misleading statements by the time we finished the House State Affairs hearing on March 3rd. But they never corrected their statements or their narrative. And these statements and this narrative has continued to be perpetuated in professional circles and in the media to this day. This is conduct that is unprofessional, it is disingenuous, and in my mind, it is unacceptable. You will also see on the last page of this handout excerpts from emails from librarians in their official capacity. When you look at those comments, you will see a marked lack of humility, a lack of measured reason, and no indication of appreciation for what it means to be a state-funded facility placed in a position of responsibility with the opportunity to influence a child. There is no First Amendment right to harm a child by exposing them to graphic sexual material. These are materials that can't be posted on YouTube. They can't be published in the newspaper. They couldn't be distributed on the House floor. But these are professionals and a professional organization who are actively defending their ability to place these materials in sections of the library available to children. At this point, um, Mr. Speaker, in the absence of any change of course on the part of these professional associations, um, I find this conduct to not only be unprofessional and unacceptable, but I find it to be unfundable. So I will be a no. Is there further debate? Gentleman from 29. Mr. Speaker, I, I find that sort of debate problematic. We have these professional organizations, experts in their field. One way of looking at what was just said was if we want to do something to you as a legislature and you have the audacity, you have the audacity to say something in response, to defend yourself, to rally your members and ask them to engage with their legislators, then look, look out, because here's what's coming to you. We'll cut your funding. We'll make it sound like you're defending this horrible practice, which they are not. I don't think that's what we do in the legislature. It's okay to just debate these issues, but we don't have to make it sound like these organizations that are Mr. Defending Speaker, their I object. Uh, on what ground? We should not impugn the motives of someone that's shared. Mr. Speaker, I, I'm not impugning anybody's motives. I'm just debating the very thing that was argued in her debate. I think it's pretty fair. Uh, the gentleman has heard the objection. Please continue. Okay. In, in order for citizens of our state to be able to engage in this process, they have to feel like they can do it without having their words used against their budgets, without having their words used against their integrity, without having somebody suggest that as professional librarians, they want to put salacious materials in front of kids? That's not fair. That's not right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Is there further debate? Gentleman from 10. Just briefly, Mr. Speaker, I, to debate in favor of the bill. You have the floor. Um, the appropriations process is, isn't the appropriate place for this discussion. I think we've already 
brought up the other legislation, and, and uh, I disagree with, with what the Library Association says here for the same reasons that I offered when, when I was debating in favor of the, the bill that we sent across the rotunda carried by the good lady from 14. However, I had to bring in case law for me to arrive at that conclusion that it was okay. I think there's perfectly, there, there is plenty of room, an abundance of room for a rational mind in good faith to look at that bill and determine that it, in fact, did meet this character. Again, I disagree, but rational minds can disagree. Uh, and I think that crushing voices of dissent would be what we would be doing by voting down this budget. How, uh, much similar to, to the comments by the good gentleman a moment ago, uh, there's a reason that we exempt pending legislation from public records inquiry, and that's because we need to be able to bounce things around off of each other safely without having some brainstorm session hit the front page because we need to be able to talk things through to get our minds wrapped around it sometimes. But we're to put too much weight into this, this email would be to deny the stakeholders out in the world that same privilege or the same grace to try to get their brains wrapped around something, especially something that might be jarring to them and suggest to them that we believe that they're not doing a good job. I, I think that uh, there's a natural visceral reaction to at least initially to anybody who suggests that one isn't doing a good job at that which they've devoted their life to. And I, and I think that we should be mindful of that. Uh, I don't think that just because somebody had a, a different opinion means that they were unprofessional. I don't think that anything presented even by me in debate on that bill or in committee is so black and white dispositive on the issue that there's not room for disagreement. And on its face, the claim that the bill doesn't have a definition is correct because it doesn't reference the section of code that contains the definition. However, the section of code that contains the definition, 1515, has a catch-all provision that says, or anything else harmful to minors. So there's still room for them to say it lacks a sufficient um, definition, even though, again, once you apply case law to it, you can stand on one foot, turn your head to the side, and see that it's, a, it's an appropriately constrained statute. It's a difficult thing to define. But nonetheless, I, I, I don't think that you, we should impugn the motives of the Library Association in their concern over the bill, even though I myself supported that bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, we have uh, allowed that we reference the bill, but we have an appropriation before us. Let's all keep that in mind. Gentleman from four. Question for the bill sponsor, Mr. Speaker. Uh, will the good lady yield? The lady yields. Lady yields. Good lady. Um, in, in the House Bill 824, we have an appropriation to the Idaho Commission for Libraries. And you, in your introduction, mentioned that the person in charge of that has already, on her own, initiated uh, an audit and has taken two books out. How does the Idaho Commission for Libraries interact with some of our local libraries that many of us have concerns that those materials are finding their way into the hands of minors? Does that mean those books are out? Does that mean the state doesn't approve them but a local library can? How, could you explain to me in the body how that works? Because I don't get it. Lady from 30. Mr. Speaker, a good gentleman from two? Four. Four. Thank Six. you. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, the Idaho Commission from Libraries, as I mentioned earlier, is not a library. However, they have this electronic collection that was being shared with public schools and local libraries. Local libraries are governed by their local boards and funded through local taxes. Public school libraries are funded uh, via state appropriations and possibly local appropriations, but the governance structure is again local. That does not absolve them, any of them, uh, regardless of what happens in this budget from the obscenity statutes that I handed out earlier. They are still bound by those. And uh, what this intent language does is effectively put the commission on libraries 
uh, at the same level of accountability for abiding by those statutes as we would our public school libraries as referenced in 33137. And then the subsequent definitions from there of, of obscene materials and materials harmful to minors, etc. So local libraries govern locally. Uh, however, some of these funds do flow through out to support our local libraries. Uh, so I don't, want, I don't want to mislead anyone on that. They do support our local libraries, but we do not govern those local libraries. They are governed locally. Number from four. Uh, follow up, please, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Will the lady yield? The lady yields. Lady yields. So like most of us, we've been getting a lot of feedback and working a lot on the issue. I know I have. Um, and one of the concerns that's been brought up to me is we're going to put folks in jail or subject to putting them in jail. Uh, is the director, the director of the Idaho Commission for Libraries is not a school, college, university, museum, republic, or acting on their behalf. Is that, do I read that correctly? Lady from 30. Mr. Speaker, good gentleman from four, that is correct. She is not a public librarian. She's the director of the Commission for Libraries. Okay. And so would not be covered by the... Through the chair, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. I apologize. One the more. The lady yields. The lady yields. The lady yields. So this individual is not covered by the affirmative defense currently available in 18-1517, and perhaps by knowing that is taking action uh, because of that? Is that... It's just my mind going A to B to C to D to E. Lady from 30. Mr. Speaker, good gentleman from four, uh, I don't purport to be an attorney that can interpret that law, but that's how I read it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Is there further debate? Lady from 14. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, to, be, to debate against the bill, um, which might not surprise anyone. Um, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, let me just um, draw a few lines here um, of uh, connections and responsibilities. Um, I think it's important to know that there is a difference between the um, Idaho Commission for Libraries and the Idaho Libraries Association. They are two distinct um, bodies. The commission, um, I, and I am referencing material that is on their website, um, is the, the commission is the agency that was established in 1901. They've been around for a while in our state. Um, and their mission is to assist libraries in building capacity to better serve communities. Employs uh, 37, I think it might be 38 in, in uh, today's budget. Um, to work with uh, libraries and librarians. Some of the things that they do, um, they, they sponsor continuing education opportunities, um, webinars, face-to-face -face trainings for library staff and for trustees. Um, they sponsor conferences. And I explain this because, um, again, they are the um, agency uh, state agency that then does advise the libraries, the librarians, and the trustees. So I think they have a very important role in what, um, how our libraries and our association both um, are being advised, perhaps in regards to, again, statute that has been on the books. Um, 1815 with its definition of harmful to minors uh, and that um, and that lengthy definition again that definition has been in place for a while with with awareness um, and so the trainings I would imagine um, would either focus on that or not now let me draw another com um, connection and that is to the American um, Libraries Association uh, of which um, in our state code, our state librarian who is um, selected by the commission, there is a requirement in state code that that individual state librarian must be educated through the American Libraries Association. Now why is that important and what is and how does that connect to what we're discussing today? The, um, the American Library Associ 
Association have made some statements um, to define their Library Bill of Rights again that has the Library Bill of Rights has been in establishment since the early 1900s. But I think the more recent interpretation of the ALA's policy and interpretation um, and statements, um, I think this body would find um, of great interest as it relates to this. So if I might, um, Mr. Speaker, I might uh, uh, read, permission to read from uh, the, a couple of those statements. I would be happy to summarize those statements. Um, oh, excuse me. I can ask for, may I ask permission? I move to, that I have permission to read from the statements. Uh, that the lady be allowed to read from, yeah, uh, I think it's proper then that you name your sources. Uh, absolutely, yes. It's uh, directly from the um, Library Resources and Services for Minors and Interpretation of the Library Bill of Rights from 2019. Okay, the body has heard from uh, the, the reference, uh, the question, is there a debate on the motion? Gentleman from 15. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I I'm just concerned. We've been down this road before where we connect dot after dot after dot after dot to wind up something finding on some, some website or whatever. The fact is, from what I heard from the debate from the bill's sponsor, is the direct person in, in question here in regard to in charge of the Commission of Libraries admitted there was a problem and took action to solve it. And now we're talking about something that someone might have seen somewhere down on a, on a website. We're so far away from what this bill is about and trying to inject all this fear and doubt when in fact we have evidence presented to us that the person in charge of this agency recognized there was a problem and took action to solve it. Why can't we just leave it there? Thank you. Is there further debate? Challenge two. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My response is that it seems to me that if we're going to fund something in the tune of $11 million, that we should have some say over the policy. And if there's question as to the policy of the institution that we're funding, we should be able to address that and address it thoroughly without worrying about whether or not we're down the wrong rabbit hole. This is important. It's important to our kids, and it's important in terms of the amount of money we're spend or appropriating here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Is there further debate on the motion that would allow the lady to read from the re aforementioned reference? Lady from Juan. Yeah, I'm in favor of this motion. I'd like to really understand how the American Library Association is connected, and I want to hear their actual statements, not um, just a summary of that. Hmm? Yes, let's remind, let's, let's, I would remind the body it's about whether she can read or not from the reference. Is there further debate? Hearing none, will the lady close your debate on the motion? <laughs> to debate the motion um, in order to read from the ALA um, policy statement from 2019. Um, well, well, ladies and gentlemen, I will not- Close your debate on the motion. Exactly. I would um, ask for your green light and support in being able to directly, in something as important as this, directly read from the policy statement and not summarize. Thank you. Thank you. Debate on the motion to allow the lady to read from the aforementioned reference is the question. Let's call any lingering legislators into the room. And the clerk will unlock the machine and the members will record their vote on the motion to be allowed to read. Has every member voted? All right, work with me, people here. Are there members that wish to change their vote? Who wish to change their vote? <laughs> the clerk will lock the machine and record the vote. The vote counts, shows 54 in favor with 13 against and three absent. The motion is carried. The lady may read from the aforementioned references. 
Please continue to debate thank you. on House Bill 824. Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I appreciate the opportunity to read from the ALA, and I will remind you again that our state librarian that is in charge of our state commission on libraries is required to be educated by the American Library Association. And so these statements by the ALA are um, very relevant to today's discussion. So first of all, the um, ALA says that equitable access to all library resources and services should not be abridged based on chronolo chronological age. Libraries should not limit the selection and development of library resources simply because minors will have access to them. Children and young adults unquestionably possess the First Amendment rights, including the right to reserve information through, receive information through the library and print sound images data, social media, online applications, games, technologies, programming, and other formats. We cannot, these cannot be suppressed solely to protect children or young adults from ideas or images that a legislative body believes to be unsuitable for them. We have declared in policy already and proposed policy that is sitting on the other side of the rotunda that we believe that we have a definition in 1815 of harmful materials to minors that is not whether inadvertent, and I will stand by inadvertent, but there must be more vigilance in respecting and recognizing and functioning at the commission from the commission in their training in their face-to-face -face interactions with our libraries that we do have a definition and that we must be vigilant in keeping these harmful images from our children. And with that, I would ask that you oppose this budget as is written. Thank you. Gentleman from 15. Just for a quick comment, Mr. Chairman, I didn't hear anything that was read that said that that organization or any organization is, proponing, is supporting pornography uh, 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 to be provided to children. And again, if the head of the Commission of the Libraries ignored uh, the thing and ignored the concern, uh, then maybe we'd have, a, maybe we'd have a, a, a basis for this discussion. But they took the action we would want them to take. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm still listening for where um, there's any positive indication that the Commission of Libraries wants to promote pornography for children. Is there further debate? Lady from 33. Mr. Speaker, friends, I'd be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to stand and speak against this. Um, I appreciate the good words from the lady from 30. She and I, a few years back, worked together to meet with uh, librarians and to talk about some of this with Lily and EBSCO, some of the um, online material that our kids already have access to. And it seemed to me that even though we had an assurance that things would change, things never actually changed, and Wavy Davy could still be found online, very, pornogra uh, very pornographic. One of the things that I'd like to point out is, I know I said this before, I would much rather see a child taught CRT than have them exposed to pornography. Why? Because it is possible to unteach the critical race theory. It is not possible to take out of the minds of the children that which they see when exposed to pornography, whether it be visually or through the thought process. I think it's important to recognize that. I also think that uh, both with our librarians and even some of us, that we're conflating what the First Amendment guaranteed and protected. Our First Amendment does not and never intended to protect, to protect pornographic material. It never did. You see, pornography is not a victimless crime. Pornography hurts adults, let alone children. Speaker, I believe we're off track from the uh, underlying bill. Uh, and uh, I am tending to agree I appreciate the fact that we have uh, allowed to talk about, let's just say it, House Bill 666, that it lies 
in, uh, across the rotunda. However, this is an appropriation bill. Now, if you can connect them back, then that's your work. And uh, so, anyway. Mr. Speaker, I am happy to connect the dots. I appreciate <laughs> the good gentleman over there. You see, when we appropriate the money to allow pornography to take place, we have a problem. I do not want to appropriate the money that's going to allow pornography to take place because it is not a victimless crime. When pornography destroys a family, and then when the family is destroyed, you destroy the community. When the community is destroyed, you destroy the nation. That is the connect. The money allows the pornography. I am asking you to vote no. You think that maybe sending a message doesn't matter? I guarantee sending a message matters. They need to understand that we, as a legislator and legislators at the House of Representatives, do not appreciate this and do not accept it. And with that, I will um, sit down and ask you to please vote no. Is there further debate? Hearing none? Will the lady please stand and close the debate? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the handout that you received from the good lady from 31 comes from the Idaho Library Association. That is not the Idaho Commission on Libraries. Do I agree with what the Idaho Library Association put out? No. Do I think it's misleading? I sure do. But that is not the Commission on Libraries. The Idaho Commission on Libraries is required to abide by Idaho law. Not any policy of the American Library Association, the Idaho Library Association, or any other non-governmental agency or association. They're required to abide by Idaho law, and that's what this bill says. We're holding you accountable for that. A vote for this bill in no way condones the distribution of obscene or pornographic materials. And in fact, we have a director of this agency right now who is working overtime to correct any problems that she has discovered since she became the, the uh, director of this agency just a year or two ago, not long ago. So what this bill does is in fact make a strong statement that that's not okay with us. We're referencing the codes in there. We expect you to... Um, uh, follow the language that's in here and just for everyone's benefit I'm going to read it. The Idaho Commission for Libraries shall to the maximum extent possible with available staffing and resources again it's happening now with existing staffing and resources verify that library resources for K-12 students comply with sections 332508, 33137 and 181514. You have copies in your handouts. Two incorporate references to relevant statutes regarding obscene material in the Commission's electronic resources collection development policy. You have that in your handout. It's going to change. It's in the process of changing now. And three, provide a written report to the Joint Finance Appropriations Committee no later than September 1st, 2022, detailing the progress in complying with this section and any associated internal audits. Again, happening right now. You'll see in the section below we are demanding compliance with these statutes in the Federal Internet Protection Act and high quality content filtering for anything that happens in the library. I cannot defend the indefensible. We have seen that some errors have been made in our local libraries, in our school libraries, and in fact in the Commission for Library that they are in the process of correcting right now. The funding for those books have been removed. Most of them are on a licensing basis. Therefore, without the funding, they cannot continue to fund this collection except in a few instances where they purchase the books instead of license them. But again, those books are all being reviewed right now as we speak to make sure that they are compliant with Idaho code uh, guarding against obscene materials and their distribution to minors. Uh, thank you for the discussion. Uh, I voted for that bill as well and uh, regret that it hasn't moved. But in the meantime, we, we do need a budget for the Commission on Libraries and would ask for your green light. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Debate is closed. The question before the House is, shall House Bill number 824 pass the House? <clears throat> 
The clerk will unlock the machine and the members will record their votes. <clears throat> Has every member voted? Are there members that wish to change their vote? The clerk will lock the machine and record the vote. Oh, and uh, please read the pairs before you lock the machine. Gannon votes aye. Okonowitz votes nay. That does not change the vote count since it was baked in. Uh, there are 33 in favor with 36 against and one absent. House bill number 824 has failed to pass the House. We retained in the office of the chief clerk. 